So today we got something in the garage that I'm excited to be messing around with and playing with. And I was able to purchase this and let's talk about it. So this is the Alienware ASM 100 6980BLK. This was considered Alienware's and Valve's combined forces to custom build a machine designed around perfecting the experience of the Steam OS. This was released back in November 2015 cost $449 if you opted for the i3 version with 4 gigs of RAM and a 500 gig hard drive, $649 if you opted for the i5 or i7 variant with 8 gigs of RAM and a 1 terabyte hard drive, and this I purchased on eBay for $100. That's right, $100. So before we go any further into it, let's talk about the specs and then we'll do an unboxing and we'll demonstrate it and we'll see how this thing performs. So this version came with the Intel Core i7-4785T quad-core processor with 8 megs of cache, 2.2 gigahertz on idle, and it would clock up to 3.2 gigahertz. This version came with the Steam, Steam OS and is 8 gigs of dual channel DDR3 1600 megahertz and has two 4 gig sticks of memory. The graphics cards on this was the NVIDIA GeForce GTX GPU at 2 gigs of DDR5, which was pretty much comparable to an 860M, the laptop version's performance. It came with a one terabyte hard drive, 7200 RPM, Bluetooth and wireless, HDMI in and out, and had wireless connectivity of the Intel dual band wireless AC 7265 2x2 Bluetooth 4.0. 7.1 audio, two USB 3.0s, and in the front you have USB 2.0. The height is 2.7 inches tall, the depth is 7.87 inches, and the width was also 7.87 inches, like a square. And this thing weighed four pounds. It comes with a 130 watt power adapter, and you were able to actually um, set up with the Bluetooth four controllers to have kind of a console type gaming experience. Now with it, it came with the Steam controller, which they bragged on impressive functionality in your hands without the keyboard. It had dual track pads, uh, HD haptic feedback, dual stage triggers, and you're able to have fully customizable schemes, kind of set up the controllers and the buttons the way that you like for it and map it out to your gaming needs. So now for the unboxing. So when I purchased this, it came just like this. Well, it did come in another box to kind of seal it and protect it and was very well protected. So when you open it up, it's actually kind of nice because it comes with the original instruction guide that actually told you how to map out the controllers, recommendations, if you're using a Steam controller or if you're using Xbox 360 controllers. And we'll take a look at that right over here. And it told you what the button mapping is and on startup, how to initiate and activate the controllers. Some of the paperwork it did have was um, the Steam controller product guide and your quick start guide along with, let's see what else we got over here. Along with your quick start guide for using the Alienware computer itself and your warranty and area information. Now the phone packaging is actually very nice on it. And if you open this up, we were able to pull this out right over here. And this is actually in there pretty snug. And this was our computer. Let's put that over there. Underneath comes with the HDMI cable that we have over here. So we were able to set that up. And then the foam packaging right over here is our Steam controller. Now the Steam controller, if you open it through the back, which I think it comes out this way. Yep, you're able to use your batteries, two double A's, one on each side over here, which gives a little weight because this thing is fairly light, but the batteries did add a little more weight to it. Not much, but at least something to make it feel a little more girthy to say the least over here. And these are actually over here, uh, buttons i would say like paddle shifters maybe if you're playing a racing game to help shift up and down now it does come with and this one didn't come with the connector but you actually can plug in a plug so you can run it directly through the usb into the computer over there our power adapter is our 130 watt power adapter bit of a brick but decent and also the little packaging foam to help protect it and whatnot and this is what it comes with. So we're gonna take this thing out. Our controller, we're gonna leave the HDMI cord because I already have one set up. We'll put this all back in here for now. And we're gonna plug it in and boot it up and see how this thing runs. So setting this up is simple. Take our power brick and we'll go ahead, we're gonna plug it in right over here to the back. Simple and easy. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this, give us some power up here. Now, I wish this was a little longer because, well, in my case, my power search for it sits up a little higher, but it's not the end of the world on that one. Now for this, you can run it wirelessly through the Bluetooth, but I don't have any batteries on me right now. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna plug this thing directly right into here and plug it in with our cable. It should go this way. There we go. And that should be able to power it up. Now for the back, as you can see, our power connector is already lit up. We're gonna plug in our HDMI, which should be around here somewhere. All right. So now we got a mess of wires over here. So let's clean this up real quick. Turn our monitor on and let's hit our power button. All right, so as it boots up, we're welcomed by this. And this pad over here kind of works like the mouse and it kind of has that feedback, which is kind of weird, but I guess it works. So we're gonna select English, agree with the user license and our image is fine. And now they're checking to make sure my system is up to date. So now there's a newer version of Steam available. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to download and install it because I don't know when the last time this thing has been run prior to my ownership. So while this is updating, let's go ahead and let's talk about the Steam OS. So the Steam OS is a UEFI limited game support. It had bad browsers and the project was mostly for the first, uh, mostly abandoned to say. Now, the Steam machines were coupled with a new Linux-based operating system at the time called Steam OS. It was an open source OS that uses a Debian as its skeletal framework to make the PCs more living room friendly. So the point of this was to kind of bring this equivalent to a console-based experience. The Steam OS, the last update was actually in 2019. So this was probably hasn't been on in a while since then. Uh, development has been silent for like almost a year at that point. But the whole point of this is that it's an open Linux platform and it kind of left you in full control that you can take charge of your system and install new software and contact as you want. If you were Linux savvy, if you're not comfortable with Linux, then you might not be able to take advantage of kind of customizing it to what you want. Now, this is not compatible with Microsoft Windows games and applications. However, Steam OS supports seamlessly streaming your games from your Windows computer. And we'll so I've logged in and because it is Steam, you can use your pre-existing Steam account. Now. On my Steam account, I have like a crap ton of games over here, but if you look, because of compatibility and stuff like that, not all your games are gonna actually be available to play just because of compatibility issues. But for the most part, most of my games are there that I typically play or do own. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're just gonna go ahead and browse this and look. And I mean, the, U the user interface is pretty much very simple. It's a simplified version of Steam, in my opinion, I know in Steam, like if you max uh, maximize the screen and just put a full screen, this is what it looks like. So let's go ahead and let's test the performance of this. And I guess the game that we should try to see how it runs should be, let's go with Need for Speed. So let's go ahead and let's install that. Now this does have a mechanical hard drive, so there is going to be some load issues on it. And if you stay tuned for the next video, we're going to be doing some upgrades and everything like that. Well, as we're looking. The streams uh, stream this game. This game does not run on Steam OS, but if you want to sign into Steam on a nearby machine running one of the supported platforms, Windows, you can stream this over your wired network. And that is one option that you can do. So not all your games are going to work, even though I thought it did because it was up there. So let's see if we can find a game that will work, install, and let's see if we can play it. All right. So we got some games downloading, and we're going to take a look at that and see how the performance of this is. Not all games are compatible with it, and definitely the ones in my library, most of them are not. We were able to get Borderlands 2 and Counter-Strike, and I'm sure if I go through them, I might be able to find something, maybe Fall Guys? Nope. So, yeah. And I think the way it works is, is that if you see, yeah, if you see an X, that means the game is not compatible. But if you see the little down arrow over here, you're able to install it. So we can also do Shadow of Mordor if we want, but we're going to do... Uh, Borderlands 2, we're going to do Counter-Strike. So let's go back over here, and we're going to take a look at the settings. So now, if you go to the little gear icon right up here in the corner, you go to this, and you could see your downloads, network, set up your Bluetooth, time zone, all that stuff, disk management, and all the features that you want over here. So what you like is like the look. Let's see if we get that right over here. So if you look in the front, you have that little alien FX overlay that is pretty much typical to um, Alienware and we could change the settings to 
whatever we want. So we can make a blue, green, uh, yellow, red, like that. So that's how you would do it. And then the icon on the bottom over here, which let's see if that gets in there. The one over here, we can also change that color too by changing the setting right up over here. Uh, the next thing that we can do is if you want to go to the Linux OS, if you go to interface under display over here, enable access to the Linux OS, we hit yes, and now we have access to it. So now when we go to the shutdown option over here, it gives us another one, switch to desktop mode. So now we're in desktop and this is the Linux user interface for it. I'm not huge on this. I've never really tinkered with it. But for those of you who are savvy on using Linux, this would be the way to mess with it. Um, seeing your files and everything. And this is the way that you can kind of do some hacking, some homebrew and some moddings over here just going through this. But I just want to show you how to access it and get to it. All right, so now that we've kind of gone into the whole Linux aspect of it, used the software and demonstrated some of the settings that you can do with it. And I'm sure there's more in depth that we can go into, but we're gonna go right into the gaming aspect of it. So I've installed two games on it. One of them being Counter-Strike and the other one being Borderlands 2. Uh, there are some other games that you can install. Well, apparently you can install Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So we'll go ahead and we'll let that install. And let's take a look at Borderlands 2. Let's go to play and let's play the game and let's see how this controller fares up and let's see how this game works with this system. All right, so playing Borderlands 2, we're playing it at 1920, uh, 1080p settings. And this experience is actually not too bad. I'm using a 1080p monitor, so the ViewSonic one over here, and seems pretty decent. I mean, no lagging, nothing too out of the ordinary. So I guess the experience is not too bad as far as playing this game, and I know we're in the intro. The only thing I thought was pretty weird is that I've played this game, I've beat this game on my Steam account, and for some reason Steam OS didn't pick up my saved games. So don't know what it is, maybe it's a glitch, or maybe it's something I'm missing, but yeah, I have to start this game from the beginning because it didn't keep all my settings on that. So this is one game. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at uh, Counter-Strike, something a little more action intensive compared to this one. But overall, the graphics are not too bad considering we have a 2 gig uh, graphics card, DDR5, equivalent to an 860M. Now, this is an older game, so let's go to Counter-Strike and we'll see hopefully by now uh, Tomb Raider should be done installing. All right, so my experience playing Counter-Strike, as you can see, is wonderful and awesome. The graphics are so intense that they just won't even display or anything like that. Um, I kept trying to reinstall it and just working with it, and this game just keeps crashing, goes to a black screen every time I try to load it. So not sure exactly what the issue is on that one. Maybe I'd have to read some forums on that, but considering that I just want to play a game, install it, it is quite saddening that I can't play a simple game like this. So let's try All right, so Shadow of the Tomb Raider is installed. So let's go ahead and let's give it a shot. And let's see how this thing runs, if I could figure out how to use these controllers. So let's go back to here, press enter, and let's see if it plays and we get any decent of a gaming experience on it. So it is launching. So as we can see, it's not working. I've tried multiple things and so yeah, it doesn't play. So let's recap on this computer over here. So pretty much, if you buy this computer now and you get it and you're expecting to get a ultimate gaming console type experience, don't expect too much of it. Considering that the Steam OS does not have support and even though there was an update in 2019, you're very limited on the type of games that you can play on this. Uh, the controller doesn't play too bad and the one game that we were able to play actually worked pretty decent with it but as far as counter-strike and even shadow of the tomb raider they won't even load i've run into a number of glitches of it with this thing freezing and doing other weird wonky stuff and i believe it's more related towards the software versus the actual hardware aspect of it so what can we say of it if you buy this don't have your hopes too high and my biggest thing with it, I think, is mostly the software. So what can we do with it? Well, we're going to be doing a part two on this video. And you definitely want to stay tuned for that and hit those notifications so you could stay up to date on it. And in part two, what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade this thing and we're going to change it totally around. We're going to fix some issues that it does known to have, do some fresh thermal paste and all that stuff. And we're going to turn this thing into the ideal gaming computer or small form factor gaming computer that it should be. This is the i7 fourth gen. We could put 16 gigs of memory on it. And even though the uh, video card is limited in the fact that it's equivalent to 840 uh, GTX 845M or 840M, whatever one it was called, we should still be able to play some decent games on it. I know I've played games like um, Fortnite and even this on more potato video cards, but considering that the stuff is not loading shows me that this software is just not there. 
and I guess that's the disappointing factor of it. This thing would probably benefit more from a Windows 10 fresh install, which we can do on it, and some other cool upgrades. So definitely stay tuned for that. Now, if you like this video, definitely comment down below. Let me know your thoughts and your experiences if you had this computer or other ones like it. I know we did previously in the past the Alienware Area 51, R1, R2, whatever one it was called. I'll put a link to that video over there. And that thing performed phenomenally. Even though this one is sort of limited on the upgrade path, we still can upgrade it to something decent and get an enjoyable gaming experience. So if you like the hit video, hit the like button. Thanks for watching. And as always, we're going to see what we come up with next.